Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Hi guys and welcome to another Fool of the Week and unfortunately this week's Fool is someone I admire or I used to admire. I'm still in two minds here. Andy Burnham, the Mayor of Greater Manchester. Now Andy has been a great leader. He has stood up to the likes of Boris Johnson and Matt Hancock during the pandemic. He has fought hard for his community and the the way that he won a huge majority recently in the elections demonstrates that the public truly are on his side and agree with him. But unfortunately, when it comes to Brexit, I, I think Andy has made a big mistake here. So he said that the UK needs to embrace Brexit as the new reality. Now, if he had said the UK needs to accept Brexit as the new reality, I would agree with him 100%. Brexit is here to stay for the medium, medium term or even maybe for the long term. It's not going to be tomorrow or the day after that the UK is going to rejoin the European Union or in some way uh, rejoin the single market and the customs union. <clears throat> but embrace Brexit? In the same way, would you embrace the pandemic? No, you would you would accept that the pandemic is here, of course you would do that, but no one's suggesting that you embrace the pandemic. Um, why would you embrace something that's damaging to the economy, damaging to society, and in a sense damaging to democracy? We've seen how Brexiteers have run roughshod over, over democracy. So this, uh, ex this phrase uh, really confused me from somebody like Andy. Now he went on to say that the uh, rejoining the EU had gone and that keeping Scotland inside the Union is now a priority. This really was confusing for me because I thought Andy was somebody who cared about returning power to the people and in a way he doesn't want the people of Scotland to have more power. Remember, the people of Scotland did not vote for Brexit. They voted against Brexit. They're being treated like crap by uh, the Westminster government. He understands that, surely. And he says the priority is to keep Scotland in the Union. So he, he went on to say, I think it's more of an internal debate that's going on, that's going to go on uh, in this country now about how we get regional equality rather than everyone talking about how quickly we can rejoin the EU. That's gone, I'm afraid. Maybe for now, and maybe for, or maybe forever, I don't know. A lot of the problems people are facing at the moment are a consequence of Brexit. Look at the fishing industry. They're suffering those consequences because of Brexit. Rejoining the single market and the customs union, a first step towards rejoining the European Union, would fix a lot of those problems. Now, I thought, that Andy, okay, Maybe he, he's misspeaking here. Maybe he's not truly a supporter of Brexit. But then I found this video from 2016. And this is from Andy's own Twitter account. It's not somebody else uploading it and misrepresenting him. This is Andy's own speech in 2016 in the House of Commons. It is time to move beyond the rerunning of the referendum arguments and accept what people voted for. The 700,000 people in Greater Manchester who voted to leave many of them lifelong Labour voters, voted for change on immigration. I am quite clear about that, and that has to be our starting point in this debate. The status quo, full free movement, was defeated at the ballot box. And free movement does not affect all places in the same way. It affects cities differently from former industrial areas. And it has made life more difficult in places where it is already hardest. These are areas which got no real help from the government when traditional industry left, which saw house prices collapse and whole streets bought up by absent private landlords. They are places which, alongside new arrivals from the EU, continue to take in the vast majority of the country's asylum seekers and refugees. And so, unfortunately, I see this as the right-wing right -wing rhetoric that you'll hear from many Brexiteers that its freedom of movement was damaging to the UK because it brought in a lot of uh, low-paid workers from the European Union or wherever. This is quite depressing because this is a talking point used on the right 
to convince the working class that they need to end freedom of movement, for example, or they need to vote to leave the European Union. You have to remember that the working class were convinced by the likes of the Daily Mail uh, on the right when it came to immigration being bad, you know, we don't want all these foreigners here, but also on the left when it came to convincing the working class that these people, we don't have a problem with their skin color, we don't have a problem with their uh, ethnic background, we have a problem with them depressing wages. And there is actually almost no evidence, very little evidence to support the claim that immigrants coming into the country suppress wages. The, in some ways they make, they increase competition, yes, but th this doesn't, this hasn't been demonstrated to actually suppress wages. And unfortunately Andy was engaging in right-wing rhetoric here, which was extremely disappointing. So my I still respect Andy when it, came, when it comes to being mayor of Manchester. I think he has stood up to the likes of Boris Johnson, and Matt Hancock, uh, the, the Tories in general. But it, when it comes to Brexit, I think he has a huge blind spot. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. And I'll see you next time for our next Fool of the Week. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee, so why not check it out?